that's fine. Um, so hi, my name is uh, Sam Tregillis, um, and I'm at the University of uh, Nevada, Reno. I work with Professor uh, Elka Fulmer, and uh, I'm presenting our work called VR Step, Walking in Place Using Inertial Sensing for Hands-Free Navigation in Mobile VR Environments. And that, that is me walking up there kind of awkwardly, so you can kind of see as we go. So um, really quick, if you're not familiar with Google Cardboard um, or mobile VR in general, it's basically a box that turns your phone into uh, virtual reality. I mean, it lets you use your phone for virtual reality. Um, and with close to like 2 billion smartphones um, in, in the world, mobile VR solutions like Google Cardboard have the potential to bring VR to the masses. And with well over 5 million Google Cardboard um, units shipped, people already are experiencing a ton of uh, really immersive VR experiences. But a major challenge for VR developers right now is that uh, input options are pretty limited. Um, you basically, since the phone is inside the adapter here, you can see that you can't actually touch the touch screen at all, so touch screen now input is out of the window. And uh, the input is kind of limited to just head tracking and single button input. So kind of as a result, most of the mobile VR applications are just basically simple roller coasters or kind of look and see applications. Um, we, you basically aren't free to like explore these kind of exciting virtual worlds. You're just sort of being guided through them. Um, and so to that end, some people have been trying to find some different ways of solving this problem. And so given the limited in input options, there's a few techniques that uh, people have tried to enable basic navigation. Uh, so traditional input, like a joystick, does work, but um, typically with a Google Cardboard, you are holding the cardboard and a joystick at the same time, and you can't, it's kind of difficult to do that. And kind of joystick input is not really similar to real movement. It's not very immersive. Um, so there's also some, some people have tried uh, an auto walk technique. Um, this is kind of in the, in the Tuscany demo. And essentially you move um, by looking down at your feet to start an auto walk technique. You'll move forward in the direction of your gaze and then you look down again to stop. Um, and this works pretty well. Um, also another technique that people have tried are kind of a beacon based movement where you basically focus your gaze on a beacon for a number of seconds and then you'll move to that beacon. Um, so these are all, obviously they work but uh, they're kind of far from immersive. When, we look, when you have to look down to activate a button, you are pulling yourself out of the current environment, the, wherever you, you're, you have, you're forcing yourself to look somewhere else. And uh, the beacon-based approach kind of severely limits where you can actually go. You don't have the freedom to move around in your environment at all. It's all, you just have to go wherever the beacons are, have been generated. So um, we kind of asked the question, what type of input is kind of the most natural and immersive for uh, virtual navigation, specifically in mobile VR? And uh, kind of a cool video that I that really like to kind of show this. Um, this is a video where a bunch of kids are given a Google Cardboard, and you'll kind of see what they do. You can see them, they're trying to jump, they're trying to walk around, they're trying to, um, yeah, I mean, they, they want to move in VR, um, and that's their kind of their first, uh, first idea. So we kind of thought walking and running is probably the most natural form of input, but right now this input just didn't exist on mobile VR. There's no way of actually doing this. So um, we, we kind of thought, I mean, there, there are existing systems that let you walk, like in the HTC Vives, the positional tracking, um, and uh, other walking in place implementations have been done, but current solutions all kind of require external uh, instrumentation. So we kind of thought, um, why not just use the smartphone's inertial sensors? Because uh, that way you, can, you don't have to have any external implementation. So we created, um, basically using some previous work where we kind of evaluated different step detection methods on uh, Google Glass. Um, we also developed a real-time step detection algorithm for mobile VR. Uh, and you can see kind of here me walking. Uh, I'm walking to move around in the virtual environment. Um, and our implementation is called VR Step. So essentially, we detect steps in real time using a very low overhead algorithm. Uh, kind of the low overhead is pretty important to us because you're already on a smartphone trying to render two 3D images at 60 frames a second. You, you already have very little time to do um, each step. So even the smallest computational overhead can be a problem. Um, so after we've detected steps, we basically translate those steps into virtual locomotion. And uh, to determine the user's velocity, we kind of measure the time between steps. Um, a larger time between steps would kind of indicate that they're walking slowly. 
um, so you would, you would move more slowly. And if you walk qu more quickly, like th uh, th smaller time between steps, you get a faster movement. So you kind of have a dynamic control of your velocity. Uh, we conducted a user study to evaluate our approach. And uh, because other studies have kind of already evaluated walking in place compared to joystick input, um, we kind of were focused on hand, other hands-free input techniques. So we used the auto-walk technique that we mentioned earlier and kind of did a comparison with uh, these two methods. Uh, we had 18 subjects, and uh, we recorded their performance in our task, and we asked for their qualitative feedback. So this is the, um, this is the task that we asked them to do. On the left, uh, VR step um, is shown, and the other one is auto-walk. And you can kind of see that the, their goal is to get in that blue column. And uh, in about half of the cases, they had to run around an obstacle cut for a, kind of a different trajectory. And so um, essentially, we were hoping that our, te our technique was just as effective in terms of uh, performance um, as the auto walk technique, and that we thought that we would probably see more immersion with our technique. Um, so we didn't really find any significant differences between task uh, navigation methods for distance and time. Um, so essentially, we, we, we found what we wanted to. There weren't any, our, our method was just as good as this other method. Um, and we, I do want to mention that we did see a small difference in time. Um, it took a little bit longer with our VR step uh, thing when there were obstacles present. Okay. Okay, and then here's a quick uh, qualitative um, response. We asked users to rate each method. And uh, you can kind of see for certain, for efficiency and reliability, they actually preferred the auto walk technique. But um, in reality, the results kind of, there were no differences in, in um, their actual efficiency in the task. But they, most people preferred uh, VR step for learnability and immersion because, yeah, I mean, they, they felt that it was yeah, more immersive. Um, so for our future work, we kind of want to investigate different types of uh, motion gestures, uh, maybe jumping and uh, stomps and nods and uh, kind of different ways of, of augmenting the experience with that. Maybe uh, we would like to try and evaluate some VR exercise games. Um, I think it would be really fun to run around in a virtual environment for exercise. Um, right now, all of the movement is kind of in the direction of your gaze. Uh, so wherever you're looking, you'll move. But we also kind of have been thinking about basically using your head kind of like a joystick. So you can maybe tilt your head in a direction, actually change the direction that you're moving, um, kind of like just like you would be able to do with a normal joystick. Um, also, things like uh, room scale in uh, the HTC Vive um, have positional tracking, We're, but that also is very limited to like a small area. You're only, you can only move around in your small area. So we kind of wanted to investigate kind of a combination approach where you use the positional tracking um, to do small adjustments and our VR step thing for doing larger um, movements in the world. And also, um, uh, there have been indications, and as the Roberts <laughs> have mentioned, um, the simulation sickness is definitely a problem. And we think that uh, our, our technique would reduce simulation sickness because of the fact that you're actually generating um, proprioceptive feedback by you know, b bouncing your head as you walk. So we're hoping to, to kind of evaluate that a little bit more. And certain other studies have kind of suggested that that's what we'll find. So overall, um, it, you can, this will allow you to build more immersive experiences. It doesn't require any instrument, instru instrumentation. Uh, it's a little bit more immersive, and uh, it's um, definitely intuitive and easy to learn. And if you don't believe me, you can actually try our app. And also, we'll, we'll be presenting this in the morning for the student game competition. Um, but this is available for free online. If you have a Google Cardboard, you can try it out. And also, we're offering it as a Unity plugin on that Unity Asset Store. So. They don't have any questions. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sam.